Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll introduce you to the Montgomery County Public Schools Teacher of the Year. And later, we'll visit the Maryland Soccer Plex for the Washington Spirits Home Opener. But first, County Executive Ike Leggett signed into law six bills approved by the Montgomery County Council. Lorna Virgili was at the signing ceremony and joins us with more. Lorna? Sonia, five of the nine council members were here for the bill signing. They say this is a historic day where they're serving the needs of the people of Montgomery County. Surrounded by council members who sponsored each of the bills, Executive Legged signed six bills into law that address pay equity, human trafficking, hiring of veterans, and health insurance. They are designed to enhance, for the most part, uh, preferences in terms of contracting and or employment and to deal with people who are in very difficult and challenging situations, either because of employment or the work that they are in fact engaged in. Council member Craig Rice co-sponsored two of the bills, one that provides a preference for local firms in county procurement, and Bill 4814, which is designed to increase minority-owned business participation in county procurement. There will be a great opportunity to talk about the new practices that we have in terms of giving our minority, female, and disabled-owned businesses and a, a great opportunity to participate more in these contracts. We'll be giving them additional preference points, uh, and those will be based on the, the contracts and based on the disparities that we're seeing uh, within, and the Office of Procurement will be able to handle that. What it basically means is that for a lot of times where our minority, female, or disabled-owned businesses feel shut out, they'll be able to have incremental points to be able to garner some of those those county, county contracts. County contractors will also have to provide health insurance or cash equivalent to limit employee share of health insurance premiums. This is a council that sticks together that recognizes uh, the importance of many of these issues and of course uh, again thank you uh, County Executive Leggett for uh, your support and for um, moving a lot of these agenda items forward. Another of the new laws will require body works establishments, those that offer acupuncture or acupressure, to obtain a license, this to combat human trafficking. And veterans would have hiring preference for county jobs in uniformed public safety positions. In Rockville, for County Report This Week, I'm Lorna Virgili. And County Executive Ike Leggett was in Annapolis this week on a call to Governor Larry Hogan to release $68 million in school funding in the state budget. The General Assembly passed a budget that restores the Geographic Cost of Education Index funding that grants certain counties additional monies to cope with the increasing numbers in school population. Montgomery County would receive $17 million. And if the funds are not released by the governor, there might be 400 positions eliminated in Montgomery County Public Schools. If we don't get the addition of $17 million, it means that approximately 400 positions in Montgomery County would have to be eliminated or abolished. Uh, that would mean higher classes for uh, many of our classrooms and teachers. Uh, it would mean that we cannot do some of the educational initiatives that we want. Um, it would mean that in a system that is growing by 2,500 students per year, that is one of the largest, if not the, very, the largest in the entire state of Maryland. Maryland House Speaker Michael Bush was also at the rally, and he stressed that the governor cannot use the school funds for anything else in the budget. A veteran social studies teacher from Damascus High School is the MCPS Teacher of the Year. MCPS TV reports. So we are at the Fillmore in de beautiful downtown Silver Spring, and we are celebrating Champions for Children, which is the pinnacle award show in Montgomery County that celebrates educators. More than 400 people attended the evening gala to honor the school system's employees and community partners, as well as to announce the MCPS Teacher of the Year. The Montgomery County Business Roundtable for Education hosted the event. The ceremony was emceed by NBC4 News anchor Un Yang. The program honored Ginger Berry of Argyle Middle School with the Greenblatt Rising Star Teacher of the Year Award. Lisa Blygen, Special Education Paraeducator, with the Supporting Service Employee of the Year Award. Emergent Biosolutions with the Business Champion for Children Award, and Larry Edmonds with the Volunteer Champion for Children Award. Betty Collins, Director of the MCPS Department of Instructional Leadership Support, won the Dr. Edward Shirley Award for Excellence in Educational Administration and Support. The event culminated with the naming of the 2015-16 MCPS Teacher of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2015-2016 
Montgomery County Teacher of the Year is Joseph Gannon, Damascus High School. I mean, all of us here rededicate ourselves to the education of each individual student and person, recognizing that each child is unique, has unique gifts, and that our goal is to help each of them become the best version of themselves. Thank you. In addition to the Teacher of the Year title, Mr. Gannon received $3,000 and a one-year auto lease from the Fitzgerald Auto Mall. Mr. Gannon will now compete for the Maryland Teacher of the Year. I have a phrase I learned 15 years ago from a colleague of mine who passed away, but it was reach, touch, and teach. Uh, reach out to the kid, try to touch his heart, touch his mind, and then you can teach him. Just last year, the council and executive approved a bill that would provide partial public financing for local elections. The bill was designed to attract a broader pool of applicants from the outside. But as Susan Kennedy tells us, a lack of funding for the program has prompted a council committee to take action. The bill enables candidates in races for the executive or council to use matching public funds for their campaigns if they make a pledge not to receive contributions from special interests of any kind. It was agreed the program would need $2 million a year through the 2018 elections. However, in this year's budget, there was no money set aside. Uh, all throughout the country, we are hearing uh, a lot of clamor around the fact that big money should not have a place in our uh, campaigns. And uh, I think especially for Montgomery County, uh, a county of a million residents uh, with an extraordinary uh, socioeconomic diversity, et cetera, a lot of young people here who have expressed um, their disappointment and their um, lack of enthusiasm to participate uh, in our elections because they don't believe that their voices are really heard. Members of the Council's Government and Operations Committee have added those funds to the reconciliation list to get the initiative off the ground. Committee member Hans Reimer says the longer they wait to fund the system, the more money they will need when the next election rolls around. In order to have that system work, there has to be money to draw from in the match. And um, unfortunately, the executive you know, didn't find the money for it in his budget. And so that does leave it to the council to identify resources that can go in. We have four years to build up the fund, um, but it doesn't get any easier when you kick the can down the road. All nine council members have pledged their support of seeing this program get off the ground. And Nancy Navarro says making a commitment to the program now is the right thing to do. I think that, you know, public uh, campaign finance is really important. And the most important thing is to actually put money in the fund. I mean, this is the way that we really affirm our commitment to this groundbreaking uh, uh, step that we've uh, taken here in Montgomery County. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. We recently spoke with County Executive Ike Leggett, who explained why he did not include funding for public campaign finance in his proposed fiscal year 2016 operational budget. In short, he said other essential programs would have suffered cuts. Uh, we're going to have to cut vital programs in health and human services, education, or potentially increase taxes in order to provide monies for a campaign finance bill. Uh, the bill resources are not due until four years from now, three and a half years from now, I think it would be a mistake. And to suggest to do so now under those circumstances, I think it's almost foolhardy to suggest that we're going to not do some of those things or increase taxes to ensure at this point in time, three and a half years in advance, that we have money for campaign finance. I mean, people will question our priorities at that point in time. There's a new report out that touts the economic benefits of the Purple Line, and that's the first topic Montgomery County Council President George Leventhal wanted to talk about at his weekly briefing this week with reporters. Um, along with Council Members Berliner and Hucker, I met with Secretary Pete Ron, the Maryland Secretary of Transportation, um, a week ago Friday, and uh, we had an excellent meeting with the Secretary, and he's very positive about the project, and it's my understanding that Secretary Ron is going to be briefing Governor Hogan this week. So a decision on the Purple Line is imminent and it's, uh, it could not be clearer from this study and from everything that we know and understand that this is the smartest investment we can make. That if we want to send this signal that Maryland is open for business, the best way to do it is to proceed with the Purple Line. Is your child car seat properly installed? Coming up next on County Report this week, find out more about a Montgomery County program that can help you with just that. 
and some county parking garages get charging stations installed for electric cars. And we'll tell you how firefighters rescued this puppy from a pipe in Silver Spring. Don't go away. County Report This Week is coming right back. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. A car seat safety program in Germantown is helping dozens of families in Montgomery County. The program checks more than 500 car seats a month. My MC Media's Alini Barros reports. Families in Montgomery County can count on a car seat safety program to learn how to promptly strap their children into a car seat or a booster. The light turns green and these concerned parents enter fire station number 34 in Germantown. Here, they learn how to install a car seat, properly buckle their kids, and the right time to turn the seat facing forward. We're Puerto Ricans. Unfortunately, in Puerto Rico, there's no program for ba any baby for safety awareness. There, yeah, they tell you, but it's not a, like, a, like here, you know, it's, uh, it's an awareness situation. So we are just trying to make sure that we are thinking outside of the bottle. There's a third one coming. So we want to make sure that that third one is as safe as we are. We're simply coming in, running it through, and snagging it into place, just like this. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, three out of every four car seats are installed improperly. I can't tell you how many times that I roll up on a crash that looks horrific and those babies are completely safe because they're in a car seat, they're properly installed. This service has been offered by the county for the past 15 years, and officials say they check more than 500 car seats monthly. It's really important that uh, the chest clip be at armpit level, the straps be snug, you shouldn't be able to pinch any excess up at the child's shoulder. If residents don't speak English, the program has resources to make sure anyone can understand the safest way to install a car seat. And we also have this resource called the Spanish Flipbook, which will just, uh, anything that we want to talk to them about, about their child and their car seat, is pictured here. There's a lot of little details that a lot of people probably don't realize when they install just using the manual. For County Report this week, I'm Alini Barrows. You can't swaddle them first and then put them in. If you live in Rockville or a surrounding neighborhood and have ever thought about going solar, now is the perfect time to do it. Rockville is forming a neighborhood solar co-op where residents can learn about the process of going solar together and apply for a big discount. Rockville 11's Morgan Lash has a story. With the support of a Department of Energy grant to the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments, Rockville residents are now eligible for a limited time residential solar co-op program. The City of Rockville Community Power Network and Maryland Sun organized an information session for residents to come and learn more about the co-op. Today we had an information session for the um, citizens of Rockville to talk about our solar co-op that's launching. The uh, neighborhoods of Rockville are getting together to use their collective buying power to get a discount on going solar. The session had a great turnout and representatives from the Maryland Sun were on hand to answer questions residents had about going solar. Well, the idea behind a solar co-op is to, is to gather people together in Rockville who are interested in exploring if solar is going to work for them. When they come into a group like they did today, um, they hear you know, all the different kinds of questions that, that maybe they wouldn't think of to ask and they realize that it's much easier to go solar as a group. Uh, we're, we're looking at, at savings as much as, as 30 percent um, compared to if, if you uh, would go do this individually on your own. This information session was the first step in joining the Rockville Solar Co-op. Residents that attended learned about the benefits of going solar as a group. 
the process can be a little intimidating for people. So doing it as a group, in addition to getting a discount, is a great way to get the support of the group and have uh, folks, other homeowners and the folks from Maryland Sun to help answer questions and really guide people through the process. It seems great. This is my first introduction to it, but it's uh, really exciting that people are getting together and doing this. Another informational meeting will be held on Thursday, May 5th at 7 p.m. in Rockville City Hall. For more information, visit mdsun.org slash Rockville. For County Report This Week, I'm Morgan Lash. And charging stations have arrived at public parking garages. This week, County Executive Ike Leggett unveiled three stations and demonstrated the use of an electric vehicle charging station at the first of the county's garages and lots. In county garages, drivers pay 13 cents per kilowatt hour to charge their vehicles. Charging stations in the county parking facilities is one way to reinforce the idea that electrical cars are, being, are becoming an integral part of our transportation network. This is something that is long overdue. We believe by leading by examples, Montgomery County is an example of what can happen. We think that this is something that the entire public will appreciate. We need to make it much more convenient for them. These facilities will help to make that possible. These first stations are located at the Bethesda Capital Crescent Public Parking. The EV program plans to expand to 24 facilities. 26 new county businesses have received the Green Business Certification, and they were all recognized during a networking event at the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce. The county has broadened the standards for the Green Certification participation in order to stimulate growth in the green economy. So it brings more businesses in the fold to be able to be certified green and it recognizes existing accreditation programs that they're already accredited to and that we're recognizing them as part of the Montgomery County portfolio. Now restaurants, cleaning companies and hotels can apply for the green certification. County businesses that would like to be certified need to go through the application process with the Department of Environmental Protection. For more information, visit mcgreenbiz.org. This is a heartwarming story. Montgomery County firefighters worked for hours to rescue a small dog named Blue that got stuck in a six-inch pipe about a foot under the ground in Silver Spring near the entrance of Montgomery Blair High School last Saturday night. The owner was reportedly walking her new pup in the area when the mishap occurred. In order to free the small dog, firefighters had to dig a trench to reach him. A fire official said the dog's owner stood by the entire time, over seven hours, until her pup was freed and they were reunited. Coming up on County Report this week, Montgomery College is helping some Tacoma Park kids get ready for work. And... I'm the planning department's Bridget Suiso here in downtown Silver Spring. We're on a walking tour all about design excellence with the Montgomery County Planning Board. We'll have that story when County Report this week continues. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Tacoma Park youth are gearing up for the marketplace with the help of Montgomery College. MCTV has the story. When Tacoma Park residents gathered last year to discuss what their community needed, youth employment was among the top needs. And that's how the Who Wants to Work Challenge came to be the first project of the Tacoma Park Youth Collaborative. And Montgomery College stepped right in to help. My main role was to do a resume workshop with um, the participants. That was the second week of the program. Um, and I also assisted students afterwards when they were putting together their resumes, so worked with them on that. To come here and do this, it just feels natural. I think it's, um, this, we are a community college, so as much as we can connect with those in our community, and especially those who are, who will soon be MC students, hopefully, um, as, as early as we can to start making the connections, I think is very important. 
after I joined it, they teach us the, how to pre build a resume and how to do an interview, which are all things that you need to prepare for to be in a good work career and well, uh, in a career path. So I think I, I made a good choice and I learned more about it, more about how to uh, behave in a work environment, or more about how to build your character. The youth come to this program to get workforce development. I mean, a lot of them want to get employment, a lot of them want that training. So what this program was, a chance to get them the training and also the networks they, they need to really go forward and be successful. While most students focus on academics or sports after school, the visionaries behind this five-week pilot program are convinced that workforce skills are exactly what these students need and seek. These kids want to be entrepreneurs and people of that nature, so kind of starting them off with these type of thoughts and, and building this type of, of foundation is good for their progress going forward. For County Report This Week in Tacoma Park, I'm Carolina Galeano. The month of May is also known as Water Safety Month, and joining us in the studio to talk about emphasizing water safety in Montgomery County is Recreation Director Gabe Alberness. Thanks for being here. What do you want residents to know about this topic as your department prepares for the busy summer swim season? Well, we're excited. Summer season and recreation is like tax season for accountants, and all of our outdoor pools, all seven of our outdoor pools, will be opening Labor Day weekend, which are in addition to our four indoor pools located across the county. And we want to make sure that residents follow all of the safety guidelines and procedures that are very clearly posted throughout our pools. And we also want to promote an important event on May 29th from 3.30 to 6.30 at the Gaithersburg Water Park, where we're partnering with the city of Gaithersburg and Rockville to provide families with very important water safety information and techniques that they can provide for their children. It's a free event. There'll be a lot of fun activities and we encourage everybody to come out and be safe this summer. Excellent. Thank you for being here to share that information. We're Thank excited you. for the summer swim season to begin. Thanks. Montgomery County Council Member Craig Rice helped cut the ribbon at a grand reopening ceremony at the Black Hill Visitor Center this week in Boyd's. Planning Board Chair Casey Anderson was also at the celebration. We're doing the grand opening ribbon cutting for the Black Hill Nature Center, which is the fourth nature center uh, in the county. We've got others at uh, Cabin John, down in Wheaton, and also uh, in the Upper Rock Creek, but this is the first one in the Up County. Visitors will find a new kids' corner, revamped displays, and the first earth bench in Maryland at the center. In addition, there's a new water trail at the park, the first in Montgomery County. You can find more information about Black Hill Regional Park on the Montgomery Parks website. The last time we checked in with the Montgomery County Planning Department, they recapped a visit with an urban design expert as part of their Design Excellence Initiative. And now we have an update from Bridget Shui's show on a story featuring members of the planning board out and about in downtown Silver Spring on a very special tour. Bridget? That's right, the planning board wanted to tour downtown Silver Spring to see how their approvals have come to fruition. We had a chance to review everything from apartment buildings to the brand new Silver Spring library behind me, all with a focus on design excellence. Hi everybody, welcome. Hi. Jessica Fenwick. It was a beautiful spring day when the Montgomery County Planning Board took a walking and biking tour of downtown Silver Spring. The goal? To review some of the recently built development projects with a focus on design excellence. We see lots of buildings from the outside that we review for design elements and so it's great to come out and see what they look like on the inside and also see how they fit into the fabric of the community once they're finished. Design excellence is a priority for the Montgomery County Planning Department. Director Gwen Wright told us why this is so important. We're seeing some things in these buildings that really are cutting edge. We are seeing really tremendous ways of handling storm water with low impact design and environmentally sensitive design. We're seeing um, really strong, strong architectural statements, uh, creating a real sense of place. And uh, we're just uh, thrilled. It's been a really educational afternoon. Board members Norman Dreyfus, Natalie Fanny Gonzalez, and Mary Wells Harley were happy to get out of the board auditorium and hit the street to see how recent projects have raised the bar on design in downtown Silver Spring. We're trying to uh, encourage projects like this in Silver Spring, Bethesda, and other urban areas, and 
by the government stepping up and doing its share. It makes it much more believable and we lead the charge. So I think that's uh, the message that's been sent both at the planning board and the council. You feel part of it, you know, and the fact that you don't have to be a commissioner to feel that you're part of it. You can be a community member who live here, who have contributed by, by voicing your ideas, what you think that should be happening in your neighborhood. So everybody who lives in this neighborhood should be really happy and proud of what we're doing here. Look for more projects and plans about design excellence from the Montgomery County Planning Department and check out montgomeryplanning.org slash design to learn more. For County Report This Week, I'm Bridget Suiso. Coming up on County Report This Week, we'll go to the Maryland Soccerplex for the Washington Spirits home opener. And you'll meet our pet of the week. Stay with us. County Report This Week is coming right back. Check out MC Works For Me. It's a new page on Montgomery College's website that features the real stories of students who in their own words talk about how going to MC has changed their lives and put them on a path to success. Join the conversation, hashtag MC Works For Me. Registration for summer classes at MC is underway, so make plans now to sign up for the classes you want when you want them. Register in person at any of our three campuses or online anytime, 24 hours a day. And MC has introduced a new priority registration period for students who have earned at least 30 credit hours at MC. Continuing students can register early for fall classes starting April 27th and receive top priority. Open registration for all other students begins May 3rd. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Whether it was to watch their favorite Washington Spirit player, learn a new soccer move, or just root on the home team, more than 4,000 fans came out to the 2015 Washington Spirit home opener Saturday night at the Maryland Soccerplex. My MC Media's Krista Brick reports. DC! DC! Some beat drums, some waved flags, and some made signs to root on their Washington Spirit at Maureen Hendricks Field in Boyd's. Let's go Washington Spirit! More than 4,000 fans packed the Plex for the first home game of the 2015 season. I fell in love with women's soccer several years ago and Spirit was one of the closest teams, but then when I got here I realized the people were also just completely awesome and super welcoming and they just have so much heart for this game. I want to be them when I get older and just be able to watch the game and learn from it. It's a good place to come just to have fun and enjoy watching soccer. For some, it was their very first spirit game. We love it, and it hadn't really occurred to me until the first half of this game that my kids, although they play soccer, had never really seen it played well. For others, it was a chance to watch and learn. Watching the technique, like the older girls playing, I learned a lot from it. And the spirit players say the fans' enthusiasm makes the difference. In the game, when times aren't going well for us, we, we look to the crowd and the more people that are in the stands is emotional for us, it's great, it gets us you know, that extra run, that extra sprint. Just to start off with our field, I mean, we have one of the best fields, I think, in the league and it's, it's always an honor playing on a great surface and uh, like I said, the fans are amazing. It's super crafty out here and it's entertaining and that's what fans want to see. They want to see goals, they want to see nutmegs, they want to see people just getting juked left and right and they want to see the physical battles and we delivered. The Spirit came out on the winning side of their home opener, topping the NWSL defending champions FC Kansas City 3-1. to one. They're back at the Plex May 16th. For the first time, MCM will be carrying the games on Channel 21. Check out our website for dates and times. For County Report This Week, I'm Krista Brick. Let's meet our pet of the week. Kathy Stanhope joins us from the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center with more. Hi, your pet of the week is this lovely little guinea pig named Piper. She's just about nine months old and she is looking for a home. And if you're looking for an easy animal for your children, this is the way to go. They don't have a lot of maintenance, they're a lot of fun, and they can be very affectionate. So visit Piper on the web at Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center.gov or give us a call at 240-773-5900. We have a lot of animals for you to look at and take home. 
With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for watching.